But I think maybe I should put ICANN into its 20 year context. And in 1992, we had the good fortune to host an international theatre workshop. And we were lucky to have two of the world's leading practitioners in the field. We had Barney Simon, founder and artistic director of the Market Theatre of Johannesburg, and Augusta Boal, world theorist on theatre of the oppressed. I, I was able to witness how with such great ease and engagement those two men work with our community workers, social justice workers, and community artists and arts practitioners and writers. And to this day, the impact of their work is still packing a punch well above its weight. So that inspired me to, whenever I could, whenever funding was available, to bring artists to share their practice and to work with our communities. So that was the first step to ICANN. The second was one night in 1988, and we had Ridiculous Theatre Company in residence. They are now residents in the Barbican in London. And after all the audience had left and the actors had left, there was um, a couple waiting downstairs for me, and it was Mike and Peggy Shapiro, two New York-based writers, directors and producers. And they loved this place, they loved the city, and we started to talk. And they told me about a project called the Rap Conference. And that's where I met Eric Ng, because I was invited to go to the University of Iowa uh, to take part in, in that. And Eric coordinated it. He was head of playwriting in Iowa. And I have to tell you, the whole team of Harvard professors of drama were there as well. So I felt really very privileged and a wee bit out of place. But anyway. The third step was UCAN, and that was our Youth Cultural Arts Network that we coordinated for three years thanks to um, funding from Peace Monies. And UCAN became ICANN, and today we want to see ICANN becoming We Can. I think somebody else took that one. <laughs> um, so, way back then, we knew and we could see and we could witness the effects of using the arts to help communities understand each other a wee bit and hopefully at times maybe help keep um, the, the, the legacy of our, of our past. In um, February this year, through NCOR, uh, the Centre for Conflict Studies at the University of Ulster, McGee campus, I was privileged to be accepted to go to South Africa and we were staying in the township and I was staying with my host family and the mother Esme and we could talk in one night and she was unbelievable, a woman so at peace and I asked her, I said Esme, how, how did you find forgiveness? and for the people who murdered your son. And she said, by forgiving them, I freed myself. And then she started to sob and cry. And, but she wasn't crying when she was talking about her son or her <coughs> son's murderers. And I tried to comfort her and I asked her what was wrong. And she says, but he is still in, in jail. He's still incarcerated and he should be free. And I said, who is he? And she says, he, he should be free. And she didn't say anything more. But the following day, I was chatting to Brandon Hamber, who's the director of NCOR. And Brandon told me that the woman, or the man that Esme was crying for, because he was still in jail, was the head of the death squads. We, in our work, try to help understanding, we try to help healing. Forgiveness is something else and something that because it's so individual people find very hard to do but Esme showed me the power of forgiveness in her life and within her community in the township. Now Niall opened the conference on Thursday and he told a wee story that the Talbot Theatre that's just at the top of Artillery Street um, in the 1700s the traffic um, to it was such 
that they had to knock a hole in our historic walls and they created Newgate. Um, these days we have to count the footfall for all our Arts Council and all our grants. In those days I think it was the hoof fall because all the carriages coming to drop the people off the theatre <coughs> created great congestion. So a hole was, was knocked through and that's one of, I think, the Playhouse's hopes for ICANN and the future of ICANN. That our work, your work, and our work in sharing, that holes will be bored through and walls will be knocked down and we'll have greater <coughs> and more impacting pathways to peace and reconciliation. And away in the beginning in 1992, a journalist says to me, um, about the Playhouse and our work, and I says, well, you know, we, we really want to try and use the arts for social service, for our communities, it's a community service. And in a context then, before ceasefires or Good Friday agreements, we would try and engage our communities in talking about our past and our present, and hopefully our future. And I says, after all, we're based in Artillery Street. Why not use the arts as weapons to fort peace? And um, he says, I hear the boom already. <laughs> so over these two days, please, let's hear that boom. Because we can.